Hi there! Today we're going to be doing a glass effect for our report background using the free version of Figma. And I'm intentionally using some really bright colors here just for fun, um, but generally speaking you can tone this down as much as you want to for your individual report, keeping in mind that the focus should be generally on the data and not on the design elements if you want to align to best practices. But at the same time, it's it really is, in my opinion, okay every once in a while to do something that's a little bit crazy and fun just for the heck of it. So that's what we're going to be doing today. And I am going to jump over to my Figma account. All right, so we're going to start with just a frame shape. And the frame shape is where we're going to be inserting our visual elements. So I'm going to go to this little hash mark uh, menu up here and grab the frame tool and just drag a rectangle. It doesn't have to be exact. What we're gonna do is we're gonna set the size in the W and H boxes over here for width and height. And what you wanna do is um, if you go to Power BI, just check your canvas size. So if you're using the default canvas size, if you go here under this format your report page and go to canvas settings, you'll see the width and the height here. The um, Power BI scales your canvas with the monitor size. So um, this is the basically just a, a ratio of dimensions that you wanna use. So in this case, I want 720 by 1280, but you may have something different if you've made a custom canvas size. And I'm gonna go ahead and rename this frame so that I know what we're doing. I'm gonna call it Figma Demo U. Two. Now we are going to create some shape elements. And I like to kind of just create some random shapes in, to use in the background that we're going to be blurring, but you can really use anything you want here. You could use a photo in the background if you want to. I'm going to go to this resources menu and then go to plugins. And I'm going to search for the word blob. And what this does is it, um, if you click on run next to this blobs plugin, is this, this is gonna create some shapes for us so that we don't have to draw, like hand draw them with the drawing tool. So we can just um, adjust the complexity and uniqueness however you like, and then just click on insert and it'll add a shape in here. And I'm just gonna insert a few of these, maybe like four or so. And then I'm gonna close this tool. Oops, dragging my frame here. All right, so now just move these shapes so that you can see what you're doing here. We're gonna set the color on these. So choose a few colors to your preference. It looks kind of good if you have um, kind of like a, a range of colors along a spectrum. So I'm gonna go with something a little bit more toned down than I showed in my example here. So I'm just gonna pick a few. Let's go with maybe like a tan and a yellow, light yellow, and pink. Again, you can make these whatever color you want to. And I'll make this one a little bit darker as a contrast. All right. So now we need to scale these up so that they fill the available space in our frame. So I'm just going to drag and resize these and you can you can adjust the you don't have to keep them scaled exactly the same shape. You can kind of drag them around however you want to. So it looks like a potato. Okay. So now we need to get these inside our frame because that's going to be what clips them. So I'm just going to select on this left hand side over here. I'm going to hold down shift and select these vector shapes. Looks like one of them dropped in there already, but the rest of these haven't. I'm going to drag and drop them into our frame right below that. So that clips the edges. All right, so now we need our shapes that our visuals are going to be on. So this is our background, but we need our the rest of our shapes. So I'm going to use the rectangle tool up here. So select rectangle, and then I'm going to make one big uh, kind of background canvasy thing here for the visuals to go on. And I'm going to make this white, so it's gray by default. I'm going to change the fill color on the right-hand side over here to white. 
and then I'm going to set it to mostly transparent. So I'm going to do like maybe 15% here so you can see through it. And now let's do some border radius up here. So this little curvy line box, I can set this to maybe let's try 20 and see how that looks. All right, and now we just need to add our effects. So the little plus icon next to effects here is what we're going to want to use on the right hand side again. And it defaults to drop shadow. So just change from drop shadow to background blur, not layer blur, but background blur. And we're going to increase the, the number on this one a little bit. So if you click on the sun icon here, and then increase the blur to maybe like, let's try 14 and see how that looks. That's pretty good. So this background blur, you can play around with it and see um, what you generally like. But the, the thing with the blur is that it, it really shines when you have something that is very defined and high contrast behind it for it to blur. So I'm going to add a pattern effect to one of these shapes to kind of make it stand out a little bit. So this orange one back here, if I select this one, I'm going to go again to the resources menu up here and I'm going to search for the word pattern. And that's going to bring up some more plugins. And this first one is the one that I've, I've used before and it um, appears to be free. So just click run on it and it brings up some pattern options. So you can pick a color. I'm gonna choose like a dark gray, but you can use whatever color you want. So pick your color and then pick your effect. So in this case, let's see, I kind of like the, um, the honeycomb ones. I'm gonna go with that. So I've got my shape selected. I clicked on the pattern and it applied the pattern to the shape. And you can actually select multiple of these. It's kind of neat. So like if you wanted to, you could do the little dots and the honeycomb. It's kind of cool. Um, and that kind of gives you a, more of a visual context for what's blurred because you have a pattern behind the blur. You know what I mean? So there's that. And now we need our shapes that are going to go behind the visuals. So these ones are just some more rectangles. So I'm going to go to the rectangle tool and I'm going to do a big one right here. It's about this far across. And again, just kind of align this to whatever you have for visuals on your report page. So you don't have to do the exact same thing as me. I'm going to change the fill color to white. And I am going to change the opacity here to like 90 because I want it to be a little bit translucent so you can kind of see through it. And then I'm going to set the border radius again on this. So maybe I'll just do 10 here because it's kind of a smaller shape. All right, so we got that. And then we need a few more of these. So on my report, I had um, some um, KPI tiles and um, one little line chart in the bottom corner. So I'm just going to copy and paste this shape. I'm going to use control C and control V on the keyboard. That'll make it so I don't have to set all of the individual settings again and then shrink it down to like a little box here. Put it on over here and it gives you little red lines to help you align the shapes, which is pretty nice. If you hold down, I think it's Alt. Yeah, Alt. If you hold down Alt but with one shape selected, it'll tell you how many pixels are between that and whatever other shape you have your mouse hovering on. So in this case, there's 18 pixels between these two. You can use that to try and help um, keep the, the space between your objects the same. And this also has an align functionality, a lot like Power BI. So up here in the top corner, it's got the same kind of thing going on where you can select multiple visuals and you can use like say this one to align them along the top. So that's convenient. I'm just going to get four of these in here and then I'm going to scale everything down a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to select all of my rectangles here, just the white ones and scale them down a little bit. All right, so you can scale all these down at once. It's pretty convenient. It looks like I don't have everything quite lined up on the right hand side there. So let's just make these ones a little bit wider. So now if I select this and 
that's close enough. One pixel off, that's not a big deal for me. 17, it is 17, that's good, it's good. We did pretty good, all right. So we got our shapes and now we need our, um, I had like a little accent color box up here that I kind of like because it draws your attention to the top left corner. So your eye kind of knows where to start on the page. So I'm just gonna insert one more rectangle here and we're gonna use kind of align with the other box. And like that. And if I zoom in a little bit, I want to make sure that I'm not overlapping these shapes here. Looks like I'm a little bit off, so I'm just going to move this down a little bit. It's got the nudge functionality with the keyboard, just like Power BI does too. So you can select something and then hit the down arrow or whatever directional arrow to nudge it one pixel in a direction. And now we need a color for this one. So maybe like... This is looking kind of like ice cream colors to <laughs> me. All right, orange, that's a little bit bright. I don't know. Okay, how about let's go with that? That looks pretty good. Okay, so let me just tell I have 18 different versions of this in my in my canvas here. All right, so we got that. And now if we want to, we can add some icons for our KPI cards here. Uh, the icons... The, the new card visual will let you add images for your icons inside the visual. So you can do that if you want to. You can also just add them here. It's just whatever is easier is a totally legitimate way to do it. So I have some icons from a previous one that I can copy and paste over to save you the pain of watching me configure four different ones of these. But to give you an idea, um, if you need icons, the Microsoft Fluent UI Icons are in um, are a plugin in Figma. So this um, this one right here, if you run this, it'll have you put in your email address usually the first time you use it, but it is free. So this gives you all of the icons that are actually used in Microsoft products. So if you're trying to kind of keep a um, coherent theme going, uh, you can kind of align to that and use the Microsoft icons. So um, these things have tags. So if you search for like, say, person, it should come up with something. You have to hit enter for it to search. So to use these, you just drag and drop them onto the canvas. And it wants you to put in your email address. So you just drag and drop these onto the page to use them. And you can change the colors of them in the same way that you can change the colors of any other shape object in Figma. So you just select the fill here and you can adjust it to whatever color you want. And you can also scale it up and down in size. And again, if you um, have multiple selected, you can scale multiple of them at, at the same time. Scale them up and down and drag them wherever you want them. I'm just going to copy and paste some from another canvas so that to, for time saving sake, but you can insert image um, rectangles behind these two to kind of give it a little frame. And I totally did not mean to paste a second one of this accent over here, but I actually kind of like it. So I'm going to leave it and let's maybe just make this size the same. So we're pretty much done here. I am going to export this. So just to recap, um, essentially what you need for the glass effect is a shape. Usually the shape is white fill, but you could do gray or black also, depending on what color glass you want. You could, you could make it colored too, I guess. Uh, and then you just add a background blur. So pretty straightforward, um, but it's a cool effect. I like it. So I'm going to export this and then show you how to import it in Power BI. So Select your frame. That's the important part when you're exporting things from Figma. Select your frame and it'll export everything in your frame as a um, as an image. So we're going to go to the export menu on the far right here and I'm going to change the size of this to be 2x. That'll keep the, the crisp edges from getting blurry if um, the image is viewed on a larger device. And PNG is good. I'm going to click this export button. And now if I jump over to Power BI, got my visuals on a page. I'm gonna to go to the um, Canvas page here and then go to Canvas Background. And I'm gonna to go to Browse and find that file that we 
and just downloaded. All right, and you'll notice when I imported that it did nothing. That's because the background actually has a color and the um, color is set to 100% transparency. I so change this down to 0%. I feel like um, maybe what they meant by transparency here was opacity because 0% transparency is opaque but anyways now we need to change this image fit from normal which is the default to either fit or fill both will work so there we go and we are just going to rearrange these a little bit so that they're centered on the objects and we'll be good to go the other thing you'll want to do here is if you have a background on your visuals, you can disable that um, because we didn't use 100% opaque shapes behind these. So if you've got um, a white background or something like that, you can turn it off. I'll show you where to do that in a second here. So it's in, if you select your visual and then just search for the word background, it'll come up. It's under the effects menu, so this background toggle on and off. All right, so there you have it. That is how to do a glass effect on the background of your report in Power BI. Thank you for watching.